Hi, this is Dave. In this video, I'm going to continue my work on the uh, Keylog Commodore replacement power supply, specifically this one. It's the Commodore 64 plus floppy drive uh, 1541-2 PSU. And um, ultimately, what we're going to do is uh, take it apart, look at how it works inside, uh, test it in situ with the Commodore 64 and 1541 to see how much power is needed uh, to power those two devices simultaneously with one power supply. And then we'll modify this power supply or upgrade it so that it can uh, power both those two simultaneously. So stick around. So here I have the Keylog Dual PSU, um, the Commodore 1541DC my Commodore 1541 modified for DC input using the four pinned in that the 1541-2 and some other Commodore drives have. And I've got that connected to the four pin uh, connector for the drive. And I've got the, the 64 power connected to my 64 here. So let's power up the Keylog power supply. And what I want to show you is, for instance, the Keylog power supply. You can see that it can power up the 64 uh, off screen. I can see the startup screen on the 64. Everything's fine. So right now, the Keylog dual power supply is just powering the 64, but it's also connected to the 1541. Let's turn on the 1541 now. And what we're seeing happen, you can hear it, uh, the motor pulsing in the 1541. And you can see that the pop, the light went off on the keylog power supply. So now I'm gonna turn the 1541 back off. And now what's happened is the 64 has started again and the screen's on and the power supply says everything's okay. So the, the phenomenon that I'm experiencing is this particular power supply meant to power the 64 and a 1541-2, which is not the drive that I have, um, it just it doesn't work with my setup. I cannot get this power supply to power both a 64 and a, an original 1541 modified for that DC input. So of course I'm, I'm using it outside the bounds of what Keylog intended and what they advertise, but that's the experiment. Can, can this power supply power both the, the 64 and 1541, the original one? And my experience is that it can't. It, and, the phenomenon that we're seeing is that the drive, when it, in that failure mode, I'll do it again, the power supply realizes that it's overloaded. That's what I think is going on. And um, so now I've shut the drive off so the drive, so it can come back on the 64 is running. What I, inside this power supply is this particular, um, is this power supply by Meanwell. It's the Meanwell IRM25. It's the 20-watt, uh, 5-volt power supply that runs off AC. This is inside this power supply right about here. And that has an overload protection that causes it to go into what they call hiccup mode, which very well might be what we're experiencing here with the drive motor turning on and off because what that, what that indicates is that the 12-volt power that's supplied to the drive on this four pinned in as well as five volts. The 12 volt power is pulsing at least. And from the retro channel, Mark over there, he, he um, looked at the documentation on Keylog's website and, and said to me, oh, you know what? They're deriving the 12 volt power for the drive for this uh, four pin in for the drive from the five volt power supply. So you can imagine that it, that the sum of those uh, three so, uh, those three devices drawing power from that five volt uh, twenty watt power supply could exceed its capability. So what I've done in 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 anticipation of an experiment is I bought uh, another Meanwell power supply, and this one is the. Um, it's the IRM35, and so it's the 30 watt version of the five volt power supply that takes AC input, AC input and provides DC, five volt DC output. So theoretically, by replacing the 20 watt meanwhile power supply that's in there with the 30 watt power supply, uh, 
we might get it to work. So that's the interesting experiment that I want to perform. So here we are with the Keylog dual PSU. And uh, in, in the background here, I have the documentation from the Keylog site for this specific PSU um, that we'll use for comparison to the device itself. I also have um, this documentation from Keylog, which shows um, the two connectors provided and the voltages it ostensibly supplies on those. Of course, we're concerned with the Commodore 64 one and the uh, floppy drive 1541-2 uh, because that's essentially what we're trying to emulate with my 1541 DC. If we run the numbers here for the DC voltages, we see that for the Commodore 64, it says it provides five volts uh, at two amps. Mm -hmm. And for the floppy drive connector, it says it provides five volts at one amp and 12 volts at half an amp. Now, if we do the math on that, uh, that comes up to, um, you know, we take five times two plus five times one plus 12 times five, uh, about uh, 21 watts. So that's what it says it's providing on uh, DC. So on the supply, there's uh, the connectors here. Um, look at the link in the comments for the retro channels tear down of the similar key logs by the, the single PSU. But I, I was able to open this by working a spudger in here, prying it up, and then there's uh, glue along the edge, so you have to go along the edge there, and then you can open up the PSU. So when we do that, we see the following components. Now, in the diagram, it shows that there's a 9-volt AC transformer. That's right here, providing the 9 volts AC for the 64. We see that there's a 5-volt DC switching mode power supply. That's this device right here. Uh, I have another one of them. It happens to be um, the Meanwell IRM25, meaning it's 20 watts at 5 volts. Uh, self-contained, just AC input on one side, DC input on the other side. Lots of nice features, so that's right there. Then what we have here, well, first off, we see these, this disconnected wire. I accidentally pulled that off. That's the power lead to the LED on the front. It's inconsequential. I can connect it back if I'd like. What we have right here is a little board, and that is the equivalent of this DC to DC step-up converter. So what it, what it says on it is it says it's the SDXMDZ and it says it's a DC to DC boost module. So this is a, a DC to DC boost converter that brings five volt up to 12 volt, and that's how we get the 12 volt supply on the four pin DIN connector for the drive. So all told, those are the interesting components in it. There's some filter caps and there's some over voltage protection fuses and that kind of thing, but those are the major components. So, uh, the experiment that we performed earlier showed that this device is not capable of powering, in my case, the 1541, not the two, uh, and the Commodore 64 simultaneously. So why might that be? Well, we just said that this device here is an IRM25, a 20 watt, 5 watt, 5 volt power supply that is being used to power both the 64 and the 1541-2, if I had that and the, on five volts, and the 12 volts on the 1541-2 connector. Well, that's, if we, if we look at Keylog's own documentation and add up the amount of power on those, that comes to 21 watts. So it's not a surprise that we might be running this thing at its limit. So the next interesting experiment to perform then is to, well, can we beef this up? What can we put in there? In, in Mark's uh, video about the single PSU, they used the IRM 10.5, the 10 watt version. And here the dual PSU, they doubled that to 20 watts, but I'm finding it's not enough for my particular application. So what I did is I acquired the, um, the Meanwell IRM 30 ST, the 30 watt, five volt, in this case, screw terminal version. So it's, it's the same sort of device, it's just larger, and it has screw terminals for convenience, and it's in its own case because I can't mount it on this tiny board. It simply won't fit in there and it won't fit in the case. So the next interesting experiment I think is to swap out the 
IRM25 simply by desoldering it on the four pins it has and replacing it with this. And I'll use the screw terminal so we can easily put a meter in, in, in line with it and see how much current's drawing. This would be a good opportunity to determine how much the 1541 and 64 draw from that 5 volt power supply that I replaced. So, uh, so I've rearranged it so you can see what's going on, on the screen and you, you can see the 1541 activity lights. And uh, what I've done is I've spliced my meter into the 5 volt positive here using this wire nut and a separate set of, of uh, connectors with banana plugs. and. What we'll be able to do is set the meter right in here so we can see how many amps the the power supply that there are the devices are drawing and the power supply itself from that uh, mean well uh, 30 watt 5 volt power supply that it, that I put in there so let, let's first uh, start up the 64 and we see the meter saying it's drawing about a little over one amp uh, on five volts, uh, or the power supply is that it's ultimately delivering there. Now let's start up to 1541. Okay, so it spiked to three or something, but it's settled in at 1.83. So remember, uh, now we're measuring the amount of amps drawn on the meanwhile power supply, the new one that's inside the key log dual power supply, and that's supplying five volts to the 64, five volts to the 1541 DC, and 12 volts to the 1541 DC. Okay, so let's go back to the check disk. Put in a junk disk that we can run the test. Um, and away we go. Now, while that's running, let's do one more thing and get the voltage on the 5 volts so we can calculate the total power. So, using my other meter, and now what I'm going to do is touch the probes to the to the 5 volt of the the 5 volt on the mean well. So we were seeing a steady 5.08 volts there. Okay, we can see uh, the check disk completed. Uh, found a number of bad blocks, but they're they're different than the ones I've seen show on other media. So I think it's just these this old disc I have from the 80s. Uh, that was good. Um, I have the um, the ammeter running, uh, and it's showing currently a max of 3.347. But it, during the entire check disc, I saw a peak um, current of 3.979. And using the other meter, that was at 5.08 volts, and I've seen it at 5.09 volts. So 5.09 times 3.979 yields uh, 20.25 watts.
So I think we've got pretty good evidence that the combination of my 64 and my modified 1541 for DC power sometimes draws more than uh, 20 watts of power from the five volt supply, uh, which is also, of course, the, the, the one that's the basis for the 12 volts. Um, and uh, we had a successful run. So what I think I'm gonna do is uh, put this guy back together, uh, put the power supply back together in some fashion and do a couple more tests, but that's it for now. Well, that worked great. Um, so I'm really happy I got the Keylog power supply to do something that it's not advertised to do, but I intended to get it to work in the first place, which was power the 64 and a traditional uh, uh, original 1541 simultaneously. So I've, I've put it back together, and this is what this is what I did. It looks sort of like a, you know flux capacitor or something. What I decided to do is take the uh, screw terminal mount, a 30 watt meanwhile power supply, and just put it on top of the of the, the key log and run the wires to it uh, temporarily out of the vent holes. And why did I do that? Well, uh, I did that, I jury rigged it that way because I'm not done yet. What, what I had on order was the uh, competing product, the, uh, the ElectroWare um, power supply, this one, that uh, does something similar. It's got a connector for the 1541 2 4 pin uh, DC. And, uh, and it powers the 64, powers the 64 as well. So in my next video, uh, we'll attempt to do the same thing. Uh, we'll compare the two power supplies and we'll probably get this one working as well with uh, in the dual power situation that I'd like. So I hope I shared something useful by showing you the internals of that uh, potentially popular uh, Commodore replacement power supply. And uh, uh, like or comment if this was useful to you. Uh, let me know if you have um, other ideas about uh, what I might have done better, and thanks.